Listen to what Rasul Salam said. Whoever tries to please the people at the expense of displeasing Allah, then Allah is already displeased with them and He's going to make the people displeased anyway. You can't win. But whoever tries to please Allah, even at the expense of displeasing these people, Allah is pleased with them and He'll make the people pleased with them too. Did you know that? Who do you worship? Do you worship Allah? Or do you really worship something He created? Now clearly, if you see somebody with a God in their hand and they're praying to it, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Holding something in your hand saying, Oh, help me, help me. How is something you hold in your hand going to help you? Have you ever thought about that? There are people, it happened to me one time, I was riding in a car. You know, in Mexico, in Mexico, everybody's Catholic, almost everybody. And they have these little statues inside their taxis, inside their cars. I think it's called, um, what is it, St. Saint, Saint Philip, St. Saint Peter, St. Somebody, that they've got this little saint, piece of plastic, and they glue it in the car, and it's their God for traveling. Now, when you get in the car, I get in the car, I slam the door, I see it go blah, 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 blah. And the taxi driver told me, sir, you have to put your seatbelt on. I said, okay, aren't you going to put a seatbelt on your God? He said, what? I said, what's that? He said, that's my God for traveling. I said, okay, aren't you going to put a seatbelt on him? He said, you don't need one. I said, why? He said, I glued him in there. I said, excuse me, what if you sell the car? How are you going to get him out? He said, oh, if I sell a car, I'll just buy another God. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Alhamdulillah, we have Allah. And we don't have to hold him in our hand. We don't have to glue him down. And imagine something that you could buy and glue down and, and then ask that thing for something. A'udhu Billah. The other thing that happens is when you take people's opinion or you're more worried about how people's opinion is of you than Allah's opinion and what Allah thinks of you. Listen to what Rasul Salam said. Whoever tries to please the people at the expense of displeasing Allah, then Allah is already displeased with them and He's going to make the people displeased anyway. You can't win. But whoever tries to please Allah, even at the expense of displeasing these people, Allah is pleased with them and He'll make the people pleased with them too. Did you know that? Who do you worship? Do you worship Allah? Or do you really worship something He created? Now clearly, if you see somebody with a God in their hand and they're praying to it, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Holding something in your hand saying, oh, help me, help me. How is something you hold in your hand going to help you? Have you ever thought about that? There are people, it happened to me one time, I was riding in a car. You know, in Mexico, in Mexico, everybody's Catholic, almost everybody. And they have these little statues inside their taxis, inside their cars. I think it's called, um, what is it, St. Saint, Saint Philip, St. Saint Peter, St. Saint somebody, that they've got this little saint, piece of plastic, and they glue it in the car, and it's their God for traveling. Now when you get in the car, I get in the car, I slam the door, I see it go blah, 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 blah. And the taxi driver told me, sir, you have to put your seatbelt on. I said, okay, aren't you going to put a seatbelt on your God? He said, what? I said, what's that? He said, that's my God for traveling. I said, okay, aren't you going to put a seatbelt on him? He said, you don't need one. I said, why? He said, I glued him in there. I said, excuse me, what if you sell the car? 
How are you going to get him out? He said, oh, if I sell a car, I'll just buy another garden. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Alhamdulillah, we have Allah. And we don't have to hold him in our hand. We don't have to glue him down. And imagine something that you could buy and glue down and then ask that thing for something. A'udhu Billah. We think as Muslims, we're not making a big mistake. We think that we're okay because we don't do that. And that is good that we don't do that. Maybe we'll see somebody who said, well, I believe in the Lord, but I also believe in my lucky charm. Have you seen people have a lucky charm? They carry it with them or something on their wrist or something on their neck, something in the pocket, like a rabbit's foot. Have you heard about a rabbit's foot? My lucky rabbit's foot. Now, already I got a problem with that. You know what my problem with that is? Huh? I'm thinking right away, what about the rabbit? He's on crutches going, hey man, that wasn't lucky for me. Whatever you worship, other than Allah, is what will take you to hell. It said it in the Bible. And it says it in the Quran. Chapter 4, An Nisa, verse 48. Clearly said, Allah does not forgive a shirk, making partners with him in worship. But anything less than this, he can forgive it. But that's no way, Jose, not going to forgive it. We as Muslims have come to believe that because we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that's sufficient. Christians have come to believe that they said Jesus is Son of God and that's sufficient for them. Both of these are wrong. You cannot just say a few magic words and then just do whatever you want to do. It doesn't work like that. The evidence is in what you do every day. How much time do you spend reading your Quran every day? How much time do you spend in Salah? How much time do you spend helping the needy and the poor and the orphan every day? And Rasul told us that we have 360 joints in our body and each one of them needs an act of sadaqah every day. But he did tell us removing an obstacle from the path of the believers is sadaqah. Alhamdulillah. He also told us that a smile in the face of your brother is sadaqah. Now let's see how many we got out here. I got about 360. Okay, ready? I'm good for the day, man. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And before you get too excited and think you've got a snappy way to get around all of this, don't forget about the people before us. When Allah ordered them not to fish on Saturday. So on Friday night, they put the nets in the water. And then the fish went into the nets all day Saturday. And then on Saturday night, they came and pulled the nets in. They said, we didn't fish, the net did it. Sneaky way to get around. Yeah? What did Allah do to them? What did Allah do to them? And what will he do to us? The reason for telling us the story is to make sure we don't make the same mistake. You know, he said, before I leave the podium, I want to tell you about something that happened. One time, some Muslim, he decided he wanted to learn how to do dawah. You know, it's dawah. We talked about that a while ago. To invite. Now, he'd been on the job a long time, but he came to one of these conferences. He said, I want to do dawah. I want to see people come to Islam. So he got one of these pamphlets, you know, some pamphlets. He went to work. He started to give these pamphlets out. People looking at that saying, you're a Muslim? He said, yeah. You've been with us eight years. We didn't know you were a Muslim. Huh. Well, it says here, you guys pray five times a day? Yep. We ain't never seen you pray. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, we work long hours and, <laughs> and you know, it's, <laughs> I just, uh, and they have to make wudu and I don't know if the water is, could be maybe not halal water, I don't know, you know, it's, so, uh, 
We sit right here, you got to do salah. What is salah? Is salad? What is that? No, that's prayer. I got it, yeah. Five times a day. Do you do it? Well, uh, are you a Muslim? Yeah, I'm a Muslim, but uh, I, I don't do salah. Whoa. What's this next one? What's zakat? No, that's zakat. 